is a framework and, and um, infrastructure that makes uh, that makes it possible to to use the experiences from from other countries, of course, and and the, the actual building up of the infrastructures. Clarin is. Um a key uh, asset and a key uh, instrument in the uh, policy for the science and technology of the Portuguese language uh, in my country. So it is providing um, a number of resources, so data sets and also processing tools for the, the language, which enables uh, researchers and also um, people from the industry to build up uh, either further uh, results uh, in terms of uh, uh, scientific research and also in terms in commercial terms. So Claring is playing this crucial role by making available what is, has been dispersed and also helping people to push forward this very important area uh, of uh, scientific inquiry. For, uh, well, for linguistics and for, for any uh, science that works with uh, text or language in some sense, Claren is very important obviously uh, and also because it connects uh, uh, researchers from different countries uh, working on the same languages, uh, for example. I think Claren is a very good initiative because it's one of the S3 landmarks and it has a very solid community. So um, I hope that crowding can be uh, extended more for uh, um, different <laughs> communities. I, I think that the, the idea that uh, other researchers in, in humanities and social sciences could use the tools already developed by language people is uh, very well founded, uh, though they do not know it yet. So we have to make the tools more usable to, to unknowledgeable people uh, who are maybe not um, confident enough or, or interested enough to, to really grasp the whole functionality of the tools, but they can use them. If you, if you say, this is a hammer, this is the way you use a hammer, do it like this, they can do it. For me, the Claren infrastructure is actually one of the cutting-edge technology uh, applications that I can see out there. So, uh, for example, web services. Everybody spoke about web services uh, uh, five or six years ago. In Claren, we use that. So we are cutting-edge um, technology providers for the humanities and social sciences, which is much better than what we see uh, otherwise, uh, which cannot develop by, uh, be developed by individual researchers. But within this strong community uh, um, we see in Clarin, we can build on top of these cutting edge technologies, making it usable and uh, applicable for, uh, and cu even customize it to the needs of the individual researchers. Lithuania is a small country, so it has only three million speakers, one of the smallest, I think, which means that uh, it's very important for, for Lithuania to preserve language resources. Uh, uh, because uh, um, the language uh, you know, is so small, uh, and preservation and sharing of Lithuanian language resources uh, is really important to, to Lithuania and, and to, to research community. Uh, the Hungarian community has been um, active in building resources and uh, tools and have been uh, taking part in various uh, um, national and international projects uh, together but obviously uh, joining, joining Clarion Eric will put this activity on a higher level. Uh, we expect that uh, in fact the, uh, the uh, presentation I've heard so far already uh, was very useful uh, in, in linking up with uh, with activities with other partners and uh, sharing the uh, infrastructure uh, that others have uh, developed in the meantime.
the cloud infrastructure, I think it's a great, uh, great idea. It's a great platform because it offers both linguists and computer sciences a platform and a way to publish their research, create their project, and to reuse existing uh, codes and technologies, and not to start from scratch. Which I think is the most important contribution for creating a new project, especially for students, for new researchers, or for projects that have not high uh, amounts of funding. So I think that Clarin should make into known all these uh, advantages that they have in order to boost the number of projects and join people and to share their standards and their, their, their offers and their web services and these kind of things. Clarin uh, is uh, for developers, it's uh, also a very interesting challenge because uh, all applications of natural language technology in the humanities and social sciences are much, much more demanding than commercial applications. And, uh, for example, the problem of, of errors, of, uh, of uh, uh, precision of measures that, uh, that we apply, precision of tools that we construct is for our users, um, uh, they, they are more, much more sensitive to, to all different um, uh, potential errors than, 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 for example, in some kind of, of application done for, for, for the market. So. Yeah, I mean, research infrastructure has always been extremely important for astronomers, for biologists who need, you know, telescopes and clean rooms in order to do their work. And what we're seeing now is that humanities scholars and linguists and others also need um, infrastructure in order to be able to do their work. So if you to have access to large-scale corpora or big databases. Um, you need good quality infrastructure to be able to find things, to be able to find sources, to be able to find tools, to be able to do your work. Um, and therefore, I think that Clarin plays an extremely important role because it provides such an infrastructure, not only for Dutch researchers, but um, across Europe. I'm a big believer in, in, in making data openly available because if you have multiple people looking at the same data set, you're going to get multiple insights um, and things like these research infrastructures give people the opportunity to access resources easily, relatively easily, um, and reuse things that have been done in the past so that we build on each other's research work and some of the slog that goes into building resources um, and reusing that um, in new ways to develop new resources in, in a quicker fashion. We joined to Clarin uh, for one particular reason that we as historians working for the, the uh, tax corpus for texts from the 19th, 20th century and uh, this material is uh, with digitalization even bigger and bigger and uh, we can we can no more do also not only close reading but must, must do also distant reading and for this reason we connect ourselves with the uh, CLAR representative in Slovenia. At the start uh, CLARIN was for us an initiative to really think of web services. Until now, most of the things, most of the software that we had developed were standalone systems, but with Clarin suddenly came the need to integrate it into a network, to make it available to others. And for this, this was the starting point to, for the web services that we now offer. And these kinds of web services have evolved over time. Now we have about 15 or so web services, which are being used by the community and which we would not have started without Clarine. I'm a very new person here. I, I've worked here only for several months, but I really found out al already a lot of things about the infrastructure and I, I'm happy I'm in it because you meet so many new people and, and you see so many ideas which are actually completely different, maybe completely different from what you are doing, but they give you so many thoughts about your future projects and of course all the collaboration possibilities. I think that the infrastructure this building are superb and they've got lots of potential. I think the big challenge for it is to get out beyond the tech technical community and to get more into um, actually having research, uh, a thriving kind of research community around it as well, making use of those resources and actually doing applied scholarship that people, people take on and use um, and that make an impression in history departments, in literary studies departments and so on as well as the kind of core 
computational linguistics type of areas. If you ask me why it is important, it is very important because we do not want to do this on a local scale, we want to do this on an international scale. For example, we will start a project where we compare the outcome in oral history stories between the Germans, the Italians, the English and the Dutch. So that means that you need a kind of homogeneous uh, structure of metadata where you compare, can compare the outcome of the oral history interviews from the different countries. That's something you can't do alone in one country. So you need an at least a European structure where you can put in all this uh, centralized metadata uh, constructions. I find that Clarin has been a really good project over the years and has increased its utility for a large number of users. Um, there are more number of users now, um, even uh, looking at uh, the conference, the annual conference, I can see that a lot more people are coming and, and the papers have become better and better. And I think this is going to continue and it's yeah. going to be a really good thing to have something like Clarin to provide the infrastructure for language and arts.